Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms, and in today's video we're going to be discussing my top 10 uh, favourite base game pieces of equipment and machinery. So this is my, it actually might be 11 or 12 to be honest, but that's not important. This is what I use and recommend for base game uh, playthroughs, so not using any mods. Straight out of the box, vanilla FS22, uh, here's what I recommend, so let's get into the list. Alright, first up on the list, we've got the MAN TGS 18500 4x4. So this is a base model prime mover, semi-trailer if you will. So the reason why I like this uh, truck is 500 horsepower, 80 kph top speed. Uh, it has a compact short wheelbase, so you can see that the length from the front wheels to the rear wheels is quite short. Uh, and the cab has got a small relatively small amount of clearance so when you go to drive this around maps and tight areas it's much more easy to get in and out of tight areas uh, also it's got good ground clearance so you can see on the front there it doesn't have a, a large overhang like the max do so if we look at the super liner not a huge overhang but particularly on the anthem there's a bit of an overhang on the front wheels so if you try and drive this off-road there's a good chance you'll get stuck because it's basically designed for the tarmac. Uh, and they're all around the same horsepower requirement. The other, the Mack trucks have additional customization options. However, the MAN is reasonably priced for what you get. Uh, obviously, you can change the color, choose your wheel type. So between wide and standard. However, it's just a good all-round semi-trailer. So that is my pick for, for trucks. All right, next up on the list, to go with our truck, we need a trailer. So this is the Crampy SKS 30 1050. So it is 95,000 to buy. Nice striking red color. So that's, I mean, one of the reasons why I like it. But it is just a good all round compact trailer. So it's not the biggest capacity trailer you can get in base game. So the Load King Distinction Super B is the largest. However, you can get uh, other trailers here, so such as the FarmTech Fortis 3000, which will attach to a tractor. However, this is specifically designed with a turntable, so it'll attach to a, uh, a truck. So it's a truck and trailer combination. So I use this in conjunction with the man, uh, the man truck in order to move product around. So you can see here, it'll carry everything in base game. So silage, forage, hay, uh, you name it, it'll carry it. So yeah, once again, it's reasonably compact. It's good. It's easy to maneuver in and out of places. It carries a decent amount of uh, crop and product to and from. Crampy SKS 30 1050 semi-trailer. All right, next up on the list is a toss-up between the Pottinger Terrasem C6F and the Kun Espero 6000RC. So these are both cedars, but they're more specifically direct drill cedars. So they cultivate seed and fertilize all in one pass. The main difference is obviously the price and the horsepower requirement. So the Pottinger has a lower house horsepower requirement. However, it is a little bit slower. However, the Kun Espero has a higher horsepower requirement, larger tank, and a faster top top speed for uh, top working speed. So my preference is the Kun because I also like to use a 300 horsepower tractor at a minimum to operate this one. So basically, if you plow, if you're cultivating and seeding uphill, or you're carrying it fully loaded, you've got extra power on board to do what you need to do. However, if you do have a lower horsepower Tractor, the Pottinger Terrasem is also very good. But the main reason why I like these two is it's got multiple functionality within the one unit. So like I said before, we can cultivate, we can seed and we can fertilize all in one pass. So that it doesn't require three separate steps. So it's instantly more efficient uh, and the cost savings, if you're using workers, for example, uh, are basically self-explanatory. So they're my pick for cedars. So moving on to the next one. All right, next one is the Leet Wolf AgriPower. So this is a silage leveler. 
among other things. So it is in the miscellaneous category. It is two hundred roughly two hundred thousand to buy. So it's a big. Tr it's it, similar to like a snowplow, snowmobile, snow clearing, I guess, uh, piece of machinery. But its intended purpose is to level silage and move silage around in bunkers. However, in game we can use this to move pallets. We can use it to move logs, just by using our big uh, shovel, if you will, on the front. It allows us to move items around. Now. If you've got auto load on PC, so I should mention I'm on PS5 console. So a lot of these are influenced by console gameplay. So if you need to move pallets around, for example, I've used this quite extensively, especially when the game first came out and mods weren't available yet. Um, I use this to move a lot of pallets. So, and even more recently, I've used it to uh, move around logs on Silver Run Forest. So to help position logs, move them for picking up, that sort of thing. So. Plus, I think it's just a pretty cool piece of machinery all around. So that's the Leet Wolf AgriPower. All right, next up is the Amazon ZATS 3200. So this is a fertilizer spreader. So 25 grand to buy. Got a working width of 42 meters, which can be adjusted. Uh, capacity of 3,200 liters. And this is for a dry fertilizer. So you can see the spreading discs on the back there. So what this allows you to do is basically cover a huge area with a low horsepower tractor and meet your fertilizer requirements if you're playing with either precision farming or if you're playing base game and you want to get your fertilizer states. So this in conjunction with the Kuhn Espro direct drill seeder, basically we can do our seeding, cultivating and fertilization in one pass, get a growth state underway and then come back through with this one pass do a huge amount of uh, coverage in one go so it's just a really good uh, fertilizer spreader there are a couple of different options however for the price and for how quickly it can do the job that is my go-to fertilizer spreader so that's the Amazon Z ATS 3200 all right next up we've got the JCB fast track 8330 so this is the large so in the large tractor category uh, JCB fast track so 348 horsepower 70 kilometer per hour top speed so the main draw card with this tractor is for me the top speed so it's the fastest base game large tractor in game so if you need to cover a lot of distance from A to B so say for example on my no man's land playthrough driving from the shop to where I have the main farm is a bit of a bit of a hike so having a, a fast response tractor uh, just allows on saving on transit time and you can utilize the basically the speed and efficiency of this machine so an honorable mention though in the medium tractor category is its uh, medium tractor counterpart which is the JCB fast track 4220 same thing, basically lower horsepower, slightly lower top speed. However, this can have a front loader, uh, front load attachment, and it can also have different tire options, as you can see here. Uh, and it also has the ability to four wheel steer, so it's very, very maneuverable for tight spaces. So if you're playing on court farms or cams or somewhere where you've got um, access issues, this tractor is ideal for maneuverability so based on your requirements obviously I prefer large just because of the top speed but great little uh, all-rounder all right moving on all right next one on the list is the John Deere 9RX series so this comes standard with 517 horsepower uh, 40 kilometer per hour top speed however we can upgrade the engine to a maximum of 670 horsepower which puts it I think not quite at the top in terms of maximum horsepower for base game tractors but at the end of the day it's a John Deere it's iconic uh, it's the one you always see on farming videos on YouTube big American uh, Midwest open fields John Deere 9RX I mean it's hard to go past in terms of just that 
genuine American farmland feel, even though this is set up as EU. Now we're on the US version. Uh, different track setups as well. So we've got wide, we've got the three meter, and we've got standard. So nice detail, articulates in the middle. So you can see the hydraulic boom arms in there. And if we look at it from the top view, basically it, that's how it steers. So it steers from the middle if you're not familiar. And the, I guess the tracked version in real life gives you less compaction of your soil, better, better handling and traction capabilities. But in game, high horsepower, lots of traction. You can use it to pull just about everything in the base game, no problem, so it'll get the job done. Uh, only downside is it's half a million uh, with a couple of... So standard it is 428,000. So with the upgraded engine, we're looking at half a million. So, I mean, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. Just a cool bit of kit. Uh, and definitely my go-to large max horsepower tractor for base game. All right, moving on to combine harvesters. So my go-to combine for base game is the Fent Ideal 10T. So the 10T has the upgraded engine. So 790 horsepower with a 17,100 litre uh, grain tank up top. Also have options for steering or ideal drive. So it's up to you. There's no wheel configuration set up other than the brand. So you can just pick whatever you want there. Unless you go Midas, as you can see there, you get the wide rears. But I tend to just leave it uh, on the troll borgs. Standard steering wheel. Just go for the maximum horsepower and maximum capacity. So it's 591,000 to buy. But just, I think this is the most powerful. So the Class Lexion and the CR1090 Revolution are also up there. But just for my preference, this is the one I would go for. And obviously if you have a limited budget, you can get the 7T, 8T, 9T, 10T. But wherever possible, I always go for the 10T, Fent Ideal 10T. Awesome, awesome combine for base game. All right, to go with our Fent Ideal 10T Combine Harvester, we need a uh, header. So we've got the Case IH 3162 Terraflex Draper 45 foot header. So the reason why I like this header is because primarily it has a drawbar and its own wheel configuration. So we don't need an additional trailer to move this around. So I'll just zoom out a little bit if I can. So it'll fit the Fent Ideal 10T, no problem. Uh, it does have, uh, we do have the Dynaflex 40 foot. So this one here, which I believe is designed to go with the, the Fent, however, the Case IH and the New Holland, pretty much any of these will work. Uh, you can see there we've got 13.7 work, uh, meter working with 10 kph top speed. But the big thing for me is that drawbar and max work, max working width. So it just eliminates the need to have an additional trailer and save you some money. Plus the red looks pretty good in contrast with the black uh, Ideal 10T. So that's my go-to header, not just for the Ideal 10T, but the drapers in particular, are the ones I go for. All right, moving on. All right, next up, we've got the Matnow MC18-4. So something a little bit more mundane here, a forklift. So in base game, uh, for console, we don't have an auto load feature. So you are gonna be moving a lot of pallets around. And this is my go-to forklift for a couple of reasons. So the primary reason is the large diameter front tires. They handle off-road conditions quite well. Uh, and it's fairly, uh, for lack of a better word, zippy in terms of its movement in and around where you're going to be moving pallets. So it's quite responsive, accelerates up to its top speed very quickly, pretty stable. And like I said, the big wheels handle the rough terrain uh, nicely. So if you're using it, say, near a uh, greenhouse or somewhere where there might be uneven ground, 
it's a nice reliable uh, forklift so you do have the Junga Reach EFG S50 however it's got smaller tires and it's a little bit more susceptible to rough terrain so it's better in a, a flatter environment and this one's also electric so it will require recharging through a charging station whereas this one just fill it up with I mean it says fuel so it could be diesel could be petrol it's probably more likely LPG in real life to be fair but that's the main difference between the Jungarich and the Matt now Plus it's the cheapest, so can't go wrong. So yeah, my choice for forklift, the Matnow MC18-4. All right, and last one on our list is the Crone Profiliner. So this is the base game Profiliner. So it's under the trailer category in miscellaneous. So tools, miscellaneous, Profiliner. So you can see it here. So the reason why I like this is it's a curtain cider. So what that basically means is on each side, so the left side here, and the right side here uh, are side curtains so the whole side of the truck sorry the whole side of the trailer will open as well as the back so the back door will open as well so if we need to load pallets manually we can open up this entire curtain side uh, and fill it to our heart's content with pallets using our forklift cho of choice now you can get an auto loading version of this on console among other trailers so but if you're new to the game and you're not keen on mods for whatever reason, this is a good option to move pallets in bulk around the map for your cell points. So when the first when the game first came out, this was my go-to trailer for moving uh, items around for sale. Plus, I think it just looks really cool. It's a great once it's hit once it's hooked up to a prime mover or a truck. Uh, it really just sort of looks great and it's great to drive around so that is my base game choice for trailer all right there you have it so my top picks for base game equipment so like i said this is my list your list might be different so if you've got a if you've got some suggestions or different choices let me know in the comments below uh, i'd like to hear what they are and why uh be interesting to, to see uh what differences of opinion people have in regards to the base game equipment uh, particularly if you're on console or pc so let us know in the comments below if you like this list or if there's anything you would change or even if you want to share your list of items uh it'd be great to have that discussion below so thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one and bye for now